All right. Hey, welcome everybody to our team call today. Uh, this is kind of exciting because we've made some shifts over the last quarter. As you guys know, and we did at what was called the Superstar Series, where we had uh, two Superstar Diamond coaches teach us every single week for two months. And then we just recently started the beginning of this year doing not team call slash trainings, but live power hours with elite coaches on this team. So if you haven't been on those yet, I'm gonna invite you to do that. And if you don't know what it is yet, it's not a training. What you'll have is an elite coach that gets on for about an hour and they show you how they get into the right state by visualizing their goals, getting into the right um, energy, and then doing the vital activities of building your business, which is connecting with people, inviting people, following up with people, and you get to work right alongside them. So they just talk through exactly what they're doing as they're meeting new people on Instagram, starting conversations and making invites. So if you haven't been on those yet, they're every Tuesday and Thursday. Those links are the same for every single one of them. And they're always posted in the Dynasty Strong Team page. So make sure that you know about that. Uh, if you haven't been on one, hop on one. If you can't be on live, just, they, we do recording some of them as well. Just hop on the recording and like pretend you're on live and do a, and do a live power hour with them. Uh, we'll go through just a couple quick announcements. Uh, it won't take more than like three minutes. The Team Cup, uh, last day to register is the 31st, starts on February 1st. If you don't know what the Team Cup is, it's just a great opportunity for you to team up with four other coaches on this team or anywhere in Team Beachbody. And you just work hard on building your business, earning success club points, advancing your rank, and you're basically what it is is you earn points for uh, for like two success club points would be two team cup points. Uh, if you advance in rank, you get points. If you register for summit, you get points. And then you collectively as a team earn points. And then there's cool prizes that you guys can win. So hop on a team. We have a thread inside of the Dynasty Strong Team page. If you haven't registered, go find it and put your name. Just comment with your name and I'll help pair you up with a team. Next thing is we have Super Weekend on April. It's either gonna be April 17th, 18th, or 19th, depending on where they are hosting it locally for you. Uh, for example, Chris Pandolfo, as you guys know from this team, the Beachbody Challenge winner 2019, him and I are both going with Amwala to Philadelphia to the Super Weekend, and that will be on April 19th on a Sunday. So it depends on where you're at, what location. All you gotta do is go search in the Coach FAQ super weekend and there's a link and it will pull up an interactive map and show you guys the events that are registered so make sure that you get registered uh find where your local super saturday is make sure you get on a team cup if you're on this team call you want to grow your business and if you're not on a team cup yet that means right after this call you that's on the top of your to-do list is to get registered the last announcement is summit july 15th through the 19th is in new orleans uh we want you guys to be there with us it's by far one of my favorite events um, where we get together as a team and we learn from top coaches and other leaders and other keynote speakers outside uh, of Beachbody world and in the personal development world. And you get to learn from them. We get to celebrate your success and the success of the team. So make sure you get registered for Summit. Remember, if you're a brand new coach and you hit Success Club in your first, you hit Success Club three times in your first six months, you earn a free uh, summit ticket. So that's pretty awesome and an awesome motivation for you as a brand new coach to get right into uh, the activities that will build your business and starting to grow your customers and your team. Uh, next, I want to announce our speaker. That's all for the announcements and let her teach us. Um, she is, her name is Izzy. We had a couple of our, uh, one of our UK coaches request that we bring her on. So I sent her a message and she was more than happy to speak with us. She is the UK number one elite rank coach, ranking coach in 2020, uh, premier 2020 coach. She's a success club 10 all-star, which means you hit, she hits success club 10 every single month. She's a three-star diamond coach and she started coaching in April of 2018. And another cool fact about Izzy is that uh, she led the UK uh, winning team for their region for the team cup. So with that being said, Izzy, I will let you take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. It's 
It's really for me, like calls like this, when I get asked to kind of share my success and help other people, it's really one of the things that I enjoy the most about this business. So I can't tell you how like honored I am to be here sharing hopefully some like really good tips for you guys um, and just things that really help me level up. So Scotty asked me to just share, you know, a bit about my story and my why to start with. And um, it's quite a... You know, I know it's quite an impactful story because it's quite, the, there's been quite a lot of life that's happened to me since I joined Beachbody, unfortunately, actually in my circumstance. So I joined Beachbody, as Scotty said, um, at, in April 2018. Um, I joined because I'd actually had a, I'd had a 10 year corporate property career. I'd set up a really successful real estate office in the center of London. Um, I'd been a negotiator, so a realtor in, in your guys' eyes. Um, and then this office came up in one of the best areas of London and I said, I'm gonna run that office, I, I'm gonna go for it. Um, and I'd never led a team before. And I loved it, I really, really loved it. I built that office from a team of one to a team of six by the time I left. But I had my little boy who's actually now three and a half. Um, and I'm sure it's possibly the same for you guys over there. Um, my company were just not really amenable to me working even slightly flexible working hours so that I could actually be with my son. Um, and we had to have a full-time nanny. And I saw Arthur, my son, at the age of nine months for 30 minutes every day. And my husband and I would commute in and out of London. My husband is still in real estate. He's a really successful realtor in the center of London. Um, that's how we met. Um, and essentially we would get in the car and every Friday on the way home, I would just, just break down in tears. And my husband said to me, like, you just can't continue like this, Izzy. Like, it's just not okay. And, and it was just the same week after week. And I said, no, I've made my bed. I'll have to lie in it. I was a director by that stage. So I'd done that career for 10 years. I, you know, I'd done a history and politics degree at, at university. And I kind of, you know, hopefully you guys can resonate with this. I was kind of like, I've made my bed, I'll have to lie in it. You know, I'm earning six figures a year um, and I've got to do the responsible thing now because I'm a mother. But it just reached a point one day when I got home and I had this developer client screaming down the phone at me because one of my negotiators had gone on holiday um, vacation for you guys over there um, and she hadn't really done a handover so I had no idea what was going on but essentially she had this new tenant moving into a property she hadn't told me what was going on and I had this developer and the company that I worked for um, was really impactful big corporate firm in London and, and he had several developments across London and said look if you don't if you don't sort this out like you're gonna lose all the instructions to the entire company and I had my son Arthur on my hip and he was what 10 months old and I just broke down I put him to bed and I broke down and I turned to my husband and I said I just I, I can't do this anymore I just can't do it anymore I don't care if we've got a mortgage to pay I'm gonna have a breakdown I can't I just can't do it anymore I can't and my husband said well you're just gonna to have to keep doing it because there's no way that we can there's any other way out and so um I'd always been into fitness personally, so I was a gymnast and hurdler when I was younger. And actually through corporate life, I'd often found that I could cope with corporate life and the stresses that came with it as kind of leading a big team when I exercised. So actually I'd done Insanity, but I didn't know it was affiliated to like a coach opportunity. I'd done it before we got married. I went a bit crazy because I'm that kind of girl that like loves the cardio, crazy workouts. Um, and then after I'd had my son actually. so. I then said to my husband, right, I know the pressure's on, but I'm gonna train as a personal trainer. I really want to help other women. I know that a lot of the time we feel like we don't belong in the gym. There's a lot of blokes in there a lot of the time and they're making a lot of noises and we feel like we should get out of there, right? And I was like, I'm gonna be that girl that's actually <laughs> gonna help those girls who feel like they can't be in there. And that's when I started my Instagram. So really I tripped upon this opportunity on Instagram. It was my coach Mackenzie Huntley who is actually based in the States. So I was the only British coach in that team. I tripped upon this photo of like loads of girls having a great time. It was at Summit. I didn't know that at the time. And I was like your dream coach because I saw the coach opportunity in a sneak peek and I was like, sign me up, like banging down Mackenzie's door. Like, I don't think she'd get back to me like in time. I was just like, sign me up, tell me where I was like, that was me okay so I did that and and honestly for me like I was just training as a PT I'd set up an Instagram and I'd really looked at this opportunity as do you know what guy to my husband like this is probably just gonna help with my social media and my husband was like I think it's a pyramid scheme I think you should be like really like worried about this easy and I was like no no I've trusted my gut with everything I've done in my life and I'm gonna do it here that's just the way I am so trust me. and um 
And I did. And I really never viewed the opportunity as anything more than really just giving me the opportunity to get fit and healthy in an environment where I didn't need to go to the gym because Guy, my husband, like leaves the house at 6.30. He gets home at half seven, 8 p.m. every night, if not later. And so for me, like the opportunity to go to a gym wasn't really there um, within kind of the preschool hours. So I just said, look, I'm just going to try these programs. I've done insanity. I love them. And I started doing 80 day obsession because I'm that girl who, um, yeah, I think a lot of husbands say that, right? Um, so I'm just that girl who, um, goes to the crazy workouts always. So I started doing 80 day obsession and I started doing it for like, I think I did 21 day fix, 21 day fix extreme at that time when I'd enrolled. And then you kind of, it was just like the done thing. You then went to, to do 80 day obsession. And I started doing 80 day obsession and I was probably about 15 days in and in the middle of the night, the phone rang and I was like, that's weird. Um, and I'm like quite paranoid about stuff like that. We live in the sticks and I was like, that's really weird. So I won't pick up and then it happened again and I didn't pick up and it was a voicemail from my brother and he said, mum's had a massive brain aneurysm and she's in intensive care and she's not conscious. You need to drive to Bristol right now. And it was at half past one in the morning. And I remember speaking to my husband and I, I, I was in so much shock that I didn't even, I was like, what do I, what do I do? Like, I don't, should I, should I drive? And the guy was like, yeah, like they're telling you they don't know whether or not she's going to survive. Um, so I drove there and she never recovered. And I saw her that day. And I think in my heart of hearts, I knew she was never going to recover. My mum was literally my best friend I'm the youngest of three so I was really really close to her um we had a really really close bond and she was in a coma for three weeks and I was doing 80 day obsession and in true me style I was like I'm just gonna stick to this because I I know I, I ultimately knew what was gonna happen I knew she wasn't gonna survive and I didn't really have you know, that corporate environment anymore. I didn't really have a job that I was going to that was kind of, you know, that would just carry me through from that perspective. And so Beachbody was the thing that I lent into. And I lent into it and I showed up for that workout every day. And I was in and out of the hospital. Mum never woke up. She never recovered. And I knew that she wasn't going to recover. But I knew, and this might sound really strange, but I knew that this opportunity would still be there. And I knew that I could show up for this and I knew that it was going to carry me through. So I completed that. And when I completed that, I, I burst into tears. Like I, I just couldn't really believe that I'd finished it given what I'd been through. And obviously, you know, that was 18 months ago. I'm still dealing with it to this day, but I'll tell you what it did do. And I'm not saying that it's ever got to be this drastic. And I really hope for you it never is this drastic, but I saw firsthand what that did for me and what that did for me was that it actually meant that I was there for my son who was just under two years old at that time and if it wasn't for this opportunity to this day I don't know where I would be I I don't know how I would have coped with it because I took it upon myself that I was going to show up for this and I was still going to show up for other people and actually I didn't really share what was going on at the time because it was too painful but when I came out the other side of that I said to my husband I have to do this full time. I have to share this with other women who, who actually might not be going through a loss or they might be going through a really difficult period in their life. And I know that this is the solution no matter what you're going through, because in my opinion, like that loss was the most horrific experience of my life. And it still is this day, but Beachbody carried me through the community carried me through. And I said, I'm going to find a way to reel back on my PT and my classes, even though I was quite new, I just, I just said to him, like, you've got to trust me. I'm, I'm going to like double down on Beachbody because I want to help people in the gym, but there's only so much difference I can make. And I've really seen the impact of this firsthand. So <clears throat> I basically managed to match my PT and instructor income. And at that point I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go for it. Like, I don't really know what's going to happen. I feel really sick. I feel really sick. I feel re really irresponsible to a certain degree because, you know, we, we still do have a big mortgage to pay, right? And I was earning six figures, but I was like, I'm going to go for it. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. And so what I want to say to you guys is it doesn't really matter where you come at this opportunity from. But I will say one thing, and that is that if you want to be successful in this business, you have to lead from the heart.
And if you haven't found your passion within Beachbody, no matter whether it's to do with a program, no matter whether it's to do with some situation that it's carried you through, you need to find that. Because without that, in my opinion, you won't see that success. You really won't because it's all well and good chasing down that vision. But if you haven't experienced firsthand what that can do for somebody, you're going to struggle to then to, to then really passionately share the opportunity. So that's the first thing I would say. And so from that point, I, I don't know, like I was just like that girl that was like, you know, my head's in everywhere. I'm like, how can I, how can I really like make this run? Like, what am I going to do? And for me, yes, I led from the opportunity of the fact that actually I just wanted to get in shape after having my son. For me, it was psychological more than anything else. I've always been that girl that needs to exercise to kind of keep my head in the right place. That's just the way I am. And even my mum used to say to me when I used to get stressed out, is you just need to go and do some exercise. That's what you need to go and do. Um, so that's me, right? But I, I basically just, I would say like, be resourceful. Go out there. If you really want to make this business work, don't wait for Scotty or for anybody else or for your upline to tell you what to do. Like go out there and search for it. Like Mackenzie is amazing, but she's like a good 10 years younger than me. She's in the States. She was never really hands on with me. And actually for that, do you know what? I'm really grateful because it meant that I had to become my own leader. Okay. And so if there was a weak spot that I spotted within my own environment, I'm quite intuitive. So I'm quite, and I would say like, be that, be that top-down approach. Decide that you're going to be that girl that like basically writes down, I don't know whether you've heard of a SWOT analysis, but strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And literally write that down for yourself and work out what your weakness is, okay? And really pinpoint that. And whatever your weakness is, go out and like, you know, mine was overcoming objections, honestly. Like I was, I was hitting Success Club the first, what, two, three months I hit Success Club by the skin of my teeth because I was like, I'm going to get that summit ticket. And I like bribed my father-in-law to do it because I was like, if I don't get a free summit ticket, I'm not going to Indianapolis. I mean, that wasn't technically true. But I was like, you're going to sign up um, when he came to stay. So he was like, okay, okay. Like, all right, leave me alone. Um, so I would just say that. And I would also say that kind of decision, it's a decision. It's, and I want to ask you guys this now, like, are you all in or are you on the fence? And I think you guys will know that answer when I ask you that question. Like, do you get up in the morning and you're like, I'm going for this. So we're like, I'm going to go for it. But there's, there's a backdoor option out there because if there's a backdoor option out there, you're not all in. I'll just say that. And you may or may not agree with that, but that's just my opinion. So but then I was like, right, okay, I, I'm going to be a superstar diamond coach. That's what I'm going to be. And, and in my head, and even now I'm like, what would a superstar diamond coach do? And again, it's like that self audit top down approach. Look at your Instagram, look at your Facebook, look at the way that you execute your business and call yourself out. And I say this to my coaches all the time. Like some of them are like, oh, I've just written down like some Instagram handles. And I'm like, Okay, cool. But if you work for corporate and you were working for them and they sat you down for a meeting, would you tell them that you were tracking your business with pen and paper? Fuck no. Sorry, excuse my language. You wouldn't, would you? You, you like that would not be acceptable. So why would that be acceptable for your own business when this is a six or seven figure business opportunity? And I just, I think it is, you know, we know, right? It's 99% mindset, but it really, really is. And you can achieve whatever you want in this business but you have to call yourself out on that stuff because that is self-sabotage. And unless you call yourself out on that and you do like an audit approach on your business, I can promise you that you probably won't be successful because that's kind of the danger with this business, right? Particularly for a lot of us who may not have always been self-employed. So you've got to call yourself out on that stuff. And I also, you know, I'm, I've been asked to talk about the coach opportunity, which I will go on to talk about, but I just, I really wanted to cover what kind of forced me to level up and what, what took me from doing success club eight to success club 30. Right. And, and it really was like a change like that. And it was, it was my mom's death that did that. It was my belief in, in this and what it had done for me, but I essentially just called myself out and I was like, okay, I'm sitting here in the sitting room or wherever the hell I am in the, in the house. And I'm just like ad hoc replying to people. I've got no track of what I'm doing. I'll be honest. I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. I always will be to a certain degree. So that for me was something I had to call myself out on. But I said to myself, do we think a superstar diamond coach or do we think somebody who's like top 10 elite is going to execute their business like this? No, heck no. And I said to my husband, right, 
we got a we got a clear one in spare rooms. I'm having a desk and I'm gonna have my vision board and I'm gonna have my space with my motivational quotes. When I worked in corporate London, that was me. And I'd say like be yourself. Whatever space makes you feel like you, do that. And if you haven't got that space, I promise you, like when I did it, I was like, why haven't I done this before? And I sat down to like get myself going, you know, doing my follow-ups, my invites. And I was actually like so excited. I was like, this is where I'm going to create my six or seven figure business. And I was really excited for the first time. But I promise you, like for the first, for the first year, no, for the first eight months, I was really just, just winging it. I was just winging it. I didn't have a designated space. And I know like a lot of us won't have offices, right? That, that's just the nature of, our, of the way that we live. All I'm saying is create, even if it's not a desk, create a space in your house or apartment that is exclusively yours. It is your space. It feels great because that energy is going to reflect into your business. And it might sound really woo-woo. And I was never into kind of all of this woo-woo stuff at all. Like I'm the biggest skeptic ever. Personal development. I was like, I don't need self-help. Like I'm a really successful corporate director. We all need it. And actually, in my opinion, we all really need this woo-woo stuff. So, you know, if there's a nice candle that you like, or, you know, there's a quote that you like, there's something that's going to make you feel good in that space. Put it there because it's a space that's really inviting and it then becomes a space where you actually really want to execute your business and you want to level up. And that's crucial, guys, because if you're going into a space where it's not yours and you feel a bit all over the place, that's how your business is going to feel. And it's going to bring that cohesion to your business. So that's that's like one point that I wanted to mention. Um, and then I would also just say, like, put it out there into the universe. You will have heard coaches saying this a million times a day. But you need to sit down every morning. You need to have a morning routine without fail. I don't care if you're not a morning person, become a morning person. You need to make time in your day. You need to sit down and write down what you're grateful for in this life. And I can promise you there are times in my business where I've struggled to think about what I'm grateful for. Having lost my mum, there have been periods where I'm in such a dark hole. I don't even know how I can get out. And I'll be honest, I'm a really up and down person, but I've still managed to come out and, and, be that kind of top coach in the UK and that's not been easy and I just want to say to you like I think sometimes when you see all these coaches and they're like all these beautiful pretty Instagram pictures and you're like oh it's all dreamy like there's never a bad day of course there are bad days of course there are days where you actually are really struggling to work out why you're doing this but that's why every day I don't care whether it's even Christmas day right you make five minutes in your day and I think I did do this on Christmas day. And you write down what you're grateful for, what your vision is. You have your vision board, like mine's laminated. I'll just put it, I'll just show you guys. Like mine's got my family and like where we're going and leadership retreat and all that's That's for this year. And then I have one for five years and it stares me in the face every day. So make sure you've got that. Cause then that's super simple. It's just something that's in front of your face all day long. What you're grateful for, what your vision is, what your goal is for the year, for five years, for the month, for the week and for the day. And you might be like, Izzy, that's way too much. My, my brain is exploding. Okay, well, I've thrown quite a lot of info at you all at once. But I can promise you, now that I've got it refined, it takes me max 10 minutes to do that in my morning. And I can promise you that if there's ever been a day where I haven't done it, which probably there has been two days, you know, a couple of days this past year, I'm then like, oh, I feel really off in my business today. And I can't figure out why. And it's because I haven't done that stuff. And I cannot impress upon you enough the importance of taking that upon yourself. And if you don't know what your goal is or your vision is and you're brand new, I get it. Like I was there. I was honestly finding my feet probably for the first eight months. I didn't really know. But I, when I decided that I was going all in, I was like, I'm going all in. I'm, I'd listen to a lot of personal development. And if you guys have listened to a lot of personal development, you'll know that most of those thinkers and authors talk about goals, vision, gratitude, morning routine. Okay. They're not all saying it because they're crazy. They're all saying it because that is what formulates the success in your business. And also doing your workout first thing in the morning. I know some of us are like, I don't have time in the morning. I don't agree with that. You just get up half an hour earlier and you get it done because it, it sets your day up like completely. So if you're doing it at the end of the day and you're wondering why your business is off, I'll call you out on that. It's because you're not doing work out in the morning. It sets my my mind. So I've taken quite a long long time explaining kind of that piece, but I do think that's really important before I go on to talk about the coaching and the onboarding. So 
that very much was crucial to me going from success club six to success club 30 okay and i'm not saying it's all about success club 30 because honestly i think if you were hitting success club 30 every month in your business you're probably like going to be losing people off the back because you're not actually properly effectively managing them into your business but what i will say is that once i'd done that i looked at my business and i said to myself right for me and this is what you really need to work out i think what is it that you love about this business? What is it that you really want to share with other people? And I'm hoping that we've got business builders on here. And I'm, I'm assuming that we've got people who want to build a business. They want to make this their full-time income, or they want people to have the opportunity that, that you've had. And that was the case for me. So I was like, do I just want to help people with the programs? Or do I actually want to be able to help them create the life that I'm creating that I'm so passionate about? Well, for me, it was like hands down the latter, right? So I then said to myself, okay, I'm going to make this really cut and dry. I'm not going to go for like challenges and then coaches, challenges and then coaches. I'm going to focus on one thing because for me, what you focus on, you create more of. And I'm not saying this is what you should do. This is just what I've done. And I, I do think it's probably quite niche. It depends what character type you are. But for me, I was like, I need to just concentrate on one thing and I'm going to drive business builders. So I looked at my Instagram and I said to myself, okay, no matter how I'm posting, and you've probably all heard like somebody talk about an avatar, but essentially where you are moving through your person with every post, but also moving through who you are. So yeah, you might be into fitness, but you might also be a mum, and you might also be into gin and tonic like me. Um, so you're like, you're connecting with your tribes. So that's really important. But with every post that I posted, whether or not it was about fitness, the business opportunity, my vision, my corporate background, I was very, very um, aware of the fact that every single post that I did, and this will relate to Facebook as well. I'm not a massive Facebook girl, but I'm becoming that way. Um, make sure if this is indeed what you want to do, that you are hinting or pointing at the coach opportunity with every single post. Because as we know, as you build that traction, you're slowly planting that seed. Someone might need to see it 13 times. If you're planting that seed, not in the same way, but subtly throughout every single post they see, in the end, they're going to go, Okay, I'm sick of watching this like Izzy girl post about the coaching opportunity. She's clearly loving it, like with every like vein in her life. So I've got to do it. And that when I'm really going for hard like coach drive, which I am right now, the first quarter I'm going for elite this year, and I'm not going to blim and well miss it like I did last year. Um, I, I I call myself out. I make sure even if it's a really short post, I'll say something about coaching in a really subtle way. Um, because I don't think you always want to like ram it down people's throats because then they're like, who is this girl? She's like, obviously not a human because all she talks about is coaching and that's really boring. So you need to be you as well. But the other thing that's absolutely crucial, and again, I'm talking about Instagram, but I think this is so, so similar for Facebook. I, I've been using Facebook stories a lot more and a lot of my warm market who I've been kind of too afraid to even touch are now like banging down my door being like, what are you doing? So I'm like, oh, I didn't use Facebook stories before. So it's, it's completely interchangeable. But with my Instagram stories, particularly when I'm doing a call to action, i.e. I have a sneak peek and that's something that I do once a month at least. And I'm going to talk about that briefly before I talk about the strategy. A sneak peek is something that I do once a month. I did have a period of time where I just had this sneak peek that was running for months and months and months and it had over a thousand people in it now that was very unique and it was very unique because three months after mum died i said to my husband my success partner claire who was in my downline or my uplines downline uh so like on a on a part of me was in san diego and i said to my husband uh should i just ask claire if i go to san diego and just do a sneak peek and my husband was like yeah like great idea i was like well it's gonna cost about a thousand pounds and i was like but i think it will work so i got on a plane to san diego like being the british girl i am half thinking i'm crazy had never met claire in my life we did the sneak peek and it absolutely like we just hit it off and i would say like if you've got uk counterparts one million percent do a global sneak peek because that drove my business for an entire year okay so i have coaches who are now diamond in my team who i'm like right okay i found a coach in the states i'm going to pay you up with her i think you're quite similar do a sneak peek together and that's really driving the business because it shows the global element of our business which is amazing if you've got uk coaches in particular that, that you know and obviously I'm a UK coach. So that drove my business. And I, and we use those videos in that sneak peek 
for about a year. But what I did notice was that the traction with that was dropping. So we're sending out the videos, but it's becoming older and older and older. And, you know, I would just say like, always be willing to accept that you have to try something, see how it's working. Does it still work? And I've had to call myself out on that. And now we do sneak peeks every month. And I would just say, my opinion is if you're doing a sneak peek into coaching, which I genuinely think you should all do, unless you're brand new, then you're going to plug them into your upline as a sneak peek do them fresh every month because there is nothing more amazing than somebody see you live talking about that opportunity. So that brings me nicely back to the stories that I was talking about. And that is when you're doing a call to action on the sneak peek, when you're doing a sneak peek, make sure you are on fire with your stories. And I mean on fire. So you want to be bursting with enthusiasm. Okay. If you're feeling like crap and you just really don't want to be there, you're going to have to have some energize and like maybe slap yourself around the face about 10 times. Okay. And just get that energy up because it's all about enthusiasm. I know you all know that, but that sometimes I see some of my coaches and I'm like, you're, you're asking me why it's not working for you. It's because you, I just don't see the energy. I can't feel it. I don't want to be a part of that. I just, I can't feel it. Okay. So that's crucial and be on your A game. So have those visuals ready. I, I can send these to Scotty afterwards, but I essentially have it, you know, like you have a bootcamp call to action. A lot of you will do those in Canva or maybe even Word Swag, whatever app you use, where you're calling people to action for your bootcamp. And for the most part, a lot of the time you'll have like five places, four places, three places, you know, spots are filling, spots are filling. It's exactly the same as a coach opportunity, only you're explaining that it's a mentorship, it's a business opportunity, um, and the fact that it's programs, it's fitness-based. As I said, I can send those to Scotty. But I am doing a call to action as per the business activity tracker. And I will say to you guys, like, if you're not using this, then that's the reason why you're not successful. So crucial. But the call to action when I'm leading into a sneak peek, I'm calling to action for two weeks before that sneak peek. So if you're leading into a sneak peek, in my opinion, again, um, and you're just like five days before and you're like, oh crap, oh no, I need to call to action. It's too late. Okay. You need to build that momentum two weeks before. So get yourself a marketing calendar. This one on Amazon is amazing. Um, it's like, it's super basic. I think it says like 2020 marketing calendar, 18 month promotional calendar, but it's, it's actually got like all the days of every, like they've all got names, which I didn't even realize, but there's like national kidney day. Like there's, there's all sorts, but it's great for Instagram posting too. But then you can look at your calendar and you say, right, I'm doing a sneak peek on this date. And I'm going to, I'm going to reverse engineer that. And I'm going to go back two weeks and that's when I'm going to start calling to action. And in that much like with the boot camp, like, I'm not sure if you guys do this, but when I'm doing a call to action on my boot camp, which is only usually about a week of every month, because as I say, like I focus on the business opportunity, I'm sharing what it is. So I'm sharing my boot camp page. I'm sharing it every day. And then I'm calling to action every day. And I'm talking about it every day. Same story, same exact story for coaching. Okay. I'm sharing what it is every day. I'm sharing the success of my team every day. I'm sharing my team page every day. And then I'm calling to action on the sneak peek so that then when you're inviting people in the background, they're like, Oh, it all makes sense. And that took me ages to realize. And I would often say to my coach Mackenzie, I don't know what's going on. I'm inviting people to my boot camp, and they're not interested. Well, I was showing up like three out of four days on my 21 day fix for a week and actually didn't have a call to action. They didn't know what I was doing. So as a newer coach, that can be quite hard to actually realize. And I'll be honest, like it took me quite a long time for the penny to drop on all of that stuff. It took a while, but I cannot tell you how much that will revolutionize your business because not only are you making it clear what you're inviting them to, again, it's, it's a bit like the Instagram posting, right? They're like, they're almost like, oh, for goodness sake, just like, just get me in the sneak peek. Like you've been talking about it every day for the past like two weeks. I'm just bored of hearing you already, right? But that's, you know, that's what we worry about. But they're the people that really need to hear it. And remember, and I, I think this is like one of the best tips I ever got given was, you know, I'm British and I know you guys probably like, the Brits, Brits are quite reserved. We get quite worried about what people think of us, like probably more so than Americans and Canadians for sure. I'm quarter Greek, so I'm a bit more out there. But I think we worry so much about, oh, what's everyone going to think? Like, they're all going to hate me. They're going to unfollow me. Well, do you know what? I've reached a point where I'm like, unfollow me. I don't want you to follow me. Unless you're interested in what I've got to offer, like unfollow me. Like, love me or hate me. I'm that kind of girl. So just go for it because remember, like you might be that girl who 
was that girl that needed to see that call to action 14 times or maybe needed to be asked 11 times and think about how grateful you are or maybe how grateful your coach is or your customer is because you asked them that many times so don't make it about you make it about them so when you're feeling uncomfortable and that always like i never even get uncomfortable about it anymore and if someone's like wow okay you've asked me enough times i'm like okay cool i totally get it you should have said it. it's totally cool it's not for everybody and I, do, I it's water off a duck's back so i think when you have a really really clear strategy and you're confident with what you're inviting to and i think this is so crucial like as a new coach i would invite into my coaches mackenzie's boot camp and I was like, okay, well, do you want to join the boot camp? And I didn't really know what it was and it wasn't mine. So I didn't own it. Taking ownership, like whether or not you're brand new and you're just inviting into boot camps, maybe not the coach opportunity, um, or you're inviting into coach opportunity, maybe you're a little bit more com confident. Whatever it is that you're inviting them into, please make sure it's your own, even if you're brand new and you don't know what you're doing. Like even if it, because... I remember when I, the first thing I did was invite into a boot camp in Facebook and I invite, and I had a start date. That's crucial because again, if you're clear on the start date, that makes it clear to your audience. And in your head, you're like, okay, I've got a start date. And it, in my opinion, it puts it out to the universe, right? I'm starting this on that date and therefore I have to get people in. And I'm entirely convinced that's why with my first boot camp, I was like, I've got five places and I filled those three places and I hit success club because I had a date. I took ownership and then I was confident with what I was inviting to. Um, and I think, you know, having a start date is really important, even with the coach opportunity. And I think that's really where I did level up with my business because I have a mentorship start date and you might have seen other coaches do this. So you have the sneak peek date, but then you have a mentorship start date, which is effectively when all of your coaches are going to be going through that training. Um, and much like Moira Kasaba said, um, on the national wake up call, she has a pod where they're all coming in at the same time. And I, I think that is so crucial because it's that new coach energy. It's that sense of community. You're all in it together. And actually, when I think about when I came into the business, I was put into a coach pod. And, and I was kind of reflecting on that when I was listening to the call yesterday. So I was catching up and I was thinking, would I have made it as far as I have if I hadn't been a part of a new coach pod? So I think it is really important, even if you team up with other coaches, because maybe you're working this part time and you're not inviting that many coaches, make sure you're teaming up with other coaches or your upline or whatever, so that you do have like a coach mentorship start date. And you're confident that when you have it, you're going to have a nice group of them, because I think it's much more indicative of success. So that's that. And then, you know, Scotty asked me to talk about the training. So really the training is I plug them straight into the Beachbody Champions page. I'll be honest. The training in there, the units is amazing. And quite frankly, I'm just under two years into my business. I don't have time. I know I probably do have time, but I don't want to make time for creating completely new coach training right now. I'm pushing for big goals and I know I'm going to get to it probably by the end of this year. But right now I'm really happy with the Beachbody Champions page in terms of those units. It's Beachbody approved. My coaches find it super easy. So it's nothing like reinventing the wheel, which is probably what you'll hear a lot of coaches say. Like, you know, those that see success, it's just about finding a system that's replicable and that works. That works. All of my coaches plug their new coaches into there. And then for them, leading the team, I have every other week, I have an Emerald in 24 hour call every other week and it's live because I want them to see that over and over again, that this is just a decision. This is just what we do. This is how you get into the team. And for my coaches coming to the business, they're not really going to get any time from me unless they're an Emerald. Okay. And then I take them into the business group and I've just recently um, brought them into um, saying effectively like business building you have to be Emerald and success club because I have quite a lot of coaches in my business who have been Emerald for a long time and don't hit success club, which actually I think for me is, is an ethos within my team that I've had to call myself out on and recognize that actually we really need to raise the bar because if we're going to hit these big goals, I need my girls to all be hitting success club, particularly in that business builder team. So I've been, that's been tough for me because I'm like, 
I love to love on everyone and I hate to be nasty. Um, I'm that girl, but I, you know, I'm running a business and they need to hit success club if they want more of my time. So that then creates this like FOMO because they're like, well, I have to be Emerald because I want more of this time. I, I want to get that mentorship from her. I want her to like take her under my wing, but they're not going to get it from me unless they go Emerald. And they're seeing that in the page every other week. And then of course they're seeing all these Emeralds coming through, which is how I hit elite in terms of leadership points by the middle of the year last year because that's just that's just what I breed into my team okay that it's just it's just an expectation it's not difficult it's super easy it's a decision and then really just making sure that I you know I'm a red so I can be quite insensitive with people's feelings by accident it's not nothing personal but I'm like I want to go for it and and that can be hard for me sometimes but really learning as a leader that actually there are different personality types in my team and different personality types need different kind of mentorship which is an ongoing thing for me like that's always probably going to be a little bit of my struggle because I can't always understand people because I want them all to think like I do because I'm a red so I think that's just you know that's just something that I would say and then um over and above that you know setting like I've set a diamond um a retreat which you guys will know about but that they're all pushing for the goal by the end of march and we're going on the diamond retreat on the 18th of april so they're all like okay i've got to be there you know so um yeah i think over and above that and then like setting a goal this is the final thing i'll say set yourself a goal and don't say i'm gonna try and i'll do my best or oh, I, I hopefully Arno Nakaha, who's um, global corporate director, I was lucky enough to get on a call with him when I was when I was just an Emerald coach. Um, what fifteen months ago? I'd been C Tina Turner in the August of twenty eighteen, and I met him. And I tried to get him on a call, and Thomas was like, "No, you need to be a diamond coach." I was like, "Well, I want to get on a call with Arno. Like, I got on really well with him. Is there any way that I can get on a call? Because I'm that girl that's like banging down people's doors." And he was like, okay, okay. So I got on a call with Arno and I was like, I'm really trying to go diamond by the 6th of December. And he was like, I don't ever want to hear you say that again. I don't ever want to hear you say that again. Don't try for anything because if you're trying for something, let yourself off the hook. Just say, I'm going to do it. Okay. And that, I think that one thing is the biggest tip I can give you. If you're saying I'm trying and hopefully, and I'm doing my best, ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. When I set my mind to a goal, it's happening. I'm going to do it. It's not, I'm going to try or hopefully, or I'll do my best ever. And if I ever hear my coaches say it, they know it's coming because I'll just call them out immediately because I was that girl. So of course my tribe is like, I'm trying, I'm hope hoping, you know, so really, really be conscious of what you're telling yourself. Because again, like that woo woo stuff, I never, ever believed in it, but it's so, so true. Like what you put out into the universe just, and, and honestly, like it, it's, it's almost made me sick sometimes because I'm like, I'll put something out there and then it happens. I'm like, wow, that's really scary. Like that stuff works. So don't be that closed mind girl or boy who's just like, no, it's all a load of rubbish because it's really not. Um, I'm really sorry. I feel like I've spoken at you for like 45 minutes and you're probably all like completely exhausted by me just throwing all this information at you. <laughs> no, it's been absolutely awesome. I took some notes. It's, it's like, I've, I've done this for nine years. So like hearing you say some of these things as a brand new leader, a newish leader, I'm like, oh yeah, that's something that was like heavy, like really strong on my mind at that time that have, I've let slipped a little bit. So I've actually enjoyed the call probably just as much as the brand new coaches have. Did you have anything else that you want to share with us today before I close out, Izzy? I don't think so. I think the final thing that I would say is don't ever, ever compare yourself to other people. Don't ever do that because the moment you start doing that is the moment that you slide. Like just be you. And if you don't know who you are, you'll work it out because the, the nature of what we do is that you're working out who you are and you're evolving all of the time. And I don't really look at other coaches stuff at all. That's awesome. Point. I love that. I'm just going to reiterate um, the importance of in, in the beginning, Izzy was sharing how she was just like everywhere with her business, not treating it like a six or seven figure business, just like, I guess, winging it, going at it. And I was the same way. I, as I started in April of 2011, I hit Success Club 10 because I had a, I'd made a solid decision that I will bring my wife home from work in a year. I will hit Success Club every month and I will go on the trip to Atlantis for Success Club. Like it was done. I made that decision. 
but I'm just like, you know, hitting success club 10 month one, month two. And then I got, I heard about the team cup and I jumped on a team cup team. And that's the month where I got organized as well. Like I had never written down a follow-up written down people's names anywhere. I was just getting on my Facebook and messaging people and asking for referrals and all that. And that month it's, it's, Crazy how similar it is, Izzy, because I went from Success Club 10 in month one and month two to Success Club 36 during the Team Cup. That's exactly what I did last year. Success Club 36 and Team Cup, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, it's crazy to look back, but that Team Cup, you guys might recognize some of the names. It's obviously my coach, Lindsay. It was Melanie Mitro, Shay Stanford, and Katie Hefner, who are all uh, Legacy Club members and elite coaches for multiple years now. But it was that... Um, working together with a team and making a decision we're going to win and we won the team cup that year actually and it just what but what that did for me to reiterate a lot of what Izzy shared wasn't that like oh I, I can hit success club 36 or we won the team cup like my goal was hit success club 10 I want to do something I could do consistently that I felt I could really help people and give them my time and attention but when I hit 36 that month I was like because I still had some small doubts like, man, how am I going to hit SC10 next month? I just like ran out of all the current prospects I have in the beginning. <clears throat> but what it did for me was where I said like, okay, if I can hit 36 when I go all in, I could do Success Club 10 every single month for like the rest of my life. It like, it just built a belief for me. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to challenge you guys to do everything that Izzy shared today and go all in with making that decision. I'm, and, and I commented on there, like I made the decision that I will, like I will do whatever it takes to get the top of that mountain or I will be found dead on the side of that mountain. That's how determined I am to building this business and, and helping my team achieve their goals along with us achieving our goals as well. So I'm gonna challenge you guys to that. And if you're not on that team cup yet, to get on the team cup, if you're not registered for summit, like I have to really ask you the question, unless you're having a baby like Hannah, right at that time, I have to ask you like, are you really committed to building the business that you say you want? So with that being said, know that you guys can always come to us with questions and we will be here to help guide and direct you. And once again, Izzy, it's absolutely awesome seeing what you've done. I'm excited to see what that business and that team will look like in nine years when, you, when you're the OG. <laughs> In, in like 2030 but we're grateful <laughs> for you spending your time with us today and thank you for sharing your story as well that no was worries. that really impacted I I just had one question do you want me to answer it yeah hit it. yeah let's answer it um i have a question for you when you have difficult things what's your best tip about leaning in um keep yourself busy like that's that's been my like thing in life like as I said, I'm quite an up and down person. And I think there's a lot to be said for people like that who actually are really successful because it's just learning to kind of harness that. Um, lean in, keep yourself busy and don't let your mind wander. I listen to like abundance music in the background because my brain is like, oh, I worry about this, I worry about that. And actually I think when you've got like some like music to focus on as well. Anyway, I don't want to keep you guys all night, but yeah, I would just say when you're, when you're that busy driving after your vision and your goals, it's like when you, you're like a dog with a bone, it, it gets put to one side whilst you execute your business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like nine years of coaching for me, nine and a half, it's, we've had some really hard things, you know, in our life as well to, to reiterate what Izzy says and answer your question, Hannah. And it's everything from suicide in the family, it's from sicknesses, from cancer and, and family members dying from cancer, from separating from my wife and having to work that out. Like my pre previous to Beachbody and why, why you see me so passionately talking about Beachbody in every single post is because had I not had that during any one of those circumstances, I would have went back to cocaine or to alcohol or to other things that are destructive. So having Beachbody gave me something to focus on, like have something that I could work on to distract me through those times. And, and like Izzy said, like there were times in, in my business where I went to sleep to like guided meditation music and meditations at night. And, and it's just leaning in, doing three week yoga retreat with my kids, 
and just you know just using Beachbody, like the connections, the friendships, the workouts to get through those hard times versus going in an opposite direction. So I love Beachbody. I love you guys. We're so lucky. We're so lucky that what we do is like it's about self care. Yeah. So like remember that. Just lean into that, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we'll let you guys over in the UK, more, more than half of you guys are in the UK. So we'll let you guys get to bed for the night. And my kids just walked through the door like five minutes ago. So it's time for homework over here. So we'll see you guys later. Uh, and uh, if you guys have any questions, just shoot them over to me. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, Izzy. Bye. Bye. -bye.